Swift 5.6 includes a number of enhancements to the type system, improved interaction with pointers, and adds the ability to run new plugin commands using the package manager. I thought that now, just before the dubbed up 2022, it may be a good time to review what's new in the Swift 5.6. Let's get started. First one, introduce existential any. This one gives you an ability to explicitly mark existential type with the new keyword any. Uh, the reason to do so is that existential types are more expensive than the, using the concrete types and you don't always want to use existential types. Uh, but because in the code it's not uh, explicit, it's, it was not easy to distinguish them. Let's take the example here and create a sample protocol and struct. Right now the P1 is a concrete type. Let's add the P protocol conformance. And now the P1 is an existential type and can only uh, use what is defined inside the P protocol. In the simple example, it's probably not that convincing, but imagine that you don't know anything about P and S. Uh, without the explicit information, uh, you would not be sure if it's existential or not. By adding any keyword, it is now explicit. You know that the P1 is existential type. If you would replace the P with S and let's run it, you will see an error and it has no effect on concrete type S. So we can only use any with existential type. In Swift 6, all of the existential types will have to be explicitly marked with any. Next one, unavailability condition. This is hard to read. This one is really simple and it will improve our developer's life. Uh, now Swift supports a new unavailable condition. You no longer have to write those uh, read <laughs> weird unreadable conditions. It is essential uh, a reverse version of the available condition. Right now you would write something like this. Here would go uh, the code that makes iOS 13 and Arial 2 work correctly. And because you only want to use that, the first part uh, is uh, unused and not necessary. You could just collapse it or maybe add additional command that you, this one is not used on purpose. With the new condition, you can just add it like this. Of course, there's a typo. <laughs> now it works. Notice that we no longer use an asterisk here. The reason why is that the asterisk here is a platform wildcard, which would mark this code as being unavailable on the iOS 15 or later, or all other platforms. For unavailable, this is not the case. In Swift 5.6, type placeholders allows you to omit some parts of the explicit type declaration. Usually, Swift type inference is able to easily work out the type. Compiler knows that this is an integer, uh, there's no need to specify this, but for more complex expressions, uh, when it's like unable to work out the type, you need to provide the necessary uh, type explicitly. Uh, the catch here is that uh, you need to provide the entire type signature, even only if the portion of the type is actually needed by the compiler. Let's use the sample code here. And let's run this. And as you can see, ambiguous use of init. Compiler does not know uh, which init to use. Let's add the type. Now the compiler knows that it needs to use the failable initializer to create a new instance from the given string. In this case, we only need to provide the uh, argument type. Return can be replaced uh, with the type placeholder. Does this make sense? Uh, in this case, not that uh, much, although a lazy developer is a good developer, uh, so you can still write it this way. But the intention behind the type placeholders is that uh, when you 
have much more complex expressions like uh, this one in the example, like this one, when you actually only need to provide the type uh, int. And uh, now you need to write both of them. Using the type placeholders, you can just omit the complex types by replacing them with the underscore. This one fixes a bug in the current conformance of the Swift's dictionary to the codable protocols. Right now, encoding can only be done on a string and int types. I mean, it's possible <laughs> to use an enum, but uh, it's far from what you would expect. Let's check the sample code. Let's start with a regular string dictionary. As you can see, it's being encoded as expected. Now let's change a key to this enum. You would expect them to be the same as the enum here uh, is also a string. Let's run this. And as you can see, it's a, an array of strings, definitely not uh, an expected result. To fix this, you need to add the coding key representable, uh, but because it could be a breaking change, you need to explicitly add the coding key representable to the enum. <coughs> this one. And let's run this. And we have it, the proper JSON with keys and values. Not a big deal until you need to actually send this kind of structure to a server. I'm glad it is fixed. Those were the biggest changes inside the Swift 5.6. There's more that I did not mention. You can check all of them inside the Swift changelog. I hope you enjoyed this video. All of the links are in the description. It is less than one month till dubdub. I'm really excited and can't wait to see what Apple has prepared for us. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.